Hey kids, what time is it? Adventure time. Adventure time is right. We are heading back to our friend's cabin over in the Oakley area. And this time, instead of taking our Tesla, we are taking our truck and trailer. We are starting at 165,132 miles on the odometer. We are now on the freeway and we have an hour and a half drive ahead of us, according to my phone and it's 93 degrees outside. This morning, the uh, battery in the trailer started out at 19%, and by the time we left, which was about 2.40 in the afternoon, the battery was at about 85%, just as we left the house. So by the time we get to the cabin, it's probably gonna be full because we're driving here for an hour and a half, and uh, it's full sunlight for sure. We are uh, nine minutes away from our destination or four and a half miles left to go so not that long uh, the truck has used just over a quarter of its gas tank it's 88 degrees here now in the city before we left this the, the hottest part of the city it got up to 101 degrees where we just came from so it's nice that it's cooler up here for sure I'll put on screen the elevation change between where we just came from and uh, where we're going girls how are we doing getting there shortly and then we'll uh, get the trailer parked and set up. First we had to navigate the rather narrow driveway in and also the trees were pretty low so I sped up and slowed down periodically just to double check make sure that trees were not going to be hitting the solar panels or the sides of the RV overly hard and we got through that unscathed or maybe I should clarify that was more like a residential road into the area and this is the actual driveway and they have a a loop in their driveway that is off from their major part of the driveway. In any case, it was bounded by trees and on the inside of a very sharp corner was this giant evergreen tree. So I swung as wide as I possibly could, but on the inside, the trailer was still touching that tree, uh, but we made it work eventually. Here in the trailer, the battery did get to 100% and so the solar isn't producing much yet. I did just turn on the air conditioner because it is pretty warm in here. According to this, it's showing 90 degrees and this one it's showing actually 97 <laughs> degrees in here. That's pretty hot and then 82 degrees outside is what that is showing. And I just turned on the mini split to 70 degrees, so it's gonna take a few minutes to pull that temperature down, and we will see uh, how the solar performs in this location. I'm gonna go outside now and show you what that looks like. This is a playground right outside of the, the trailer, which is cool. You can see that we avoided shade on the panels from this tree right here, so that's good. We have a giant tree there and that's going to be an issue at times of the day for sure. Um, middle of the day is when we're gonna have pretty good ex solar exposure here and we're gonna have shading in other times of the day. And then back here on this corner we avoided shading there as well. So overall I'm pretty happy but right now we are here later in the day so you can see the sun is already starting to get blocked by these trees. But in the middle portion of the day, I think it'll be pretty good. I'm not too concerned about solar exposure here though, because I think that our solar panel array is large enough that with the limited number of hours that we will have good direct sun here, it'll be more than enough to charge the batteries, I suspect. Obviously, time will tell, we'll find out. Uh, but also, it's not terribly hot or cold here, uh, where we are this time of year especially. Uh, right now it's September, and so, the HVAC system, the heating or the cooling, will not require that much energy, probably. So we'll find out. Before coming here, we knew there was water on site, so we didn't bother to fill up the fresh water tank before coming, because why uh, pull the extra weight, right? This is now us filling that up. I just wanted to show how far this had to go for us. We have a 25-foot hose first, then we have a 50-foot hose, and that goes way over here. And that's cooked, hooked up to another 50-foot hose, which luckily was here at the cabin. But the 75 feet we brought ourselves. And then finally over here is the hydrant. <laughs> so we barely squeaked by with uh, 125 feet of hose. We uh, got some sticks and leaves on the solar panels from pulling in. It was brushing against trees. So I'm now gonna go up there and sweep those off. The easiest way to clear the leaves off of the solar panels is with the downdraft of the drone, which worked fantastically well. 
I wasn't sure if it was going to be successful with that twig, but it even blew that off. The only limitation was the pine needles caught up right against the edge of the panels, but at least they were off of the photovoltaic cells, so they're not going to limit production there. As an aside, the downdraft of the drone has the opposite effect on children. Now with the clean panels, we are ready for the next time we get any direct sunlight, which doesn't look like it's going to happen until the middle of the next day. But look at that beautiful view. This trip was with six other families, which, since the cabin couldn't directly house all of us, is why we brought our trailer. One other family also brought their trailer, and the other four families stayed in the main cabin and the bunkhouse. The last time we came here with fewer families, we brought our Model S and the kayaks in tow, which worked great too, and was a ton of fun kayaking on the Smith and Morehouse Reservoir. I'll put a card above to that video. Shortly after we arrived, the other families began to arrive too, and our kids were off playing with their friends. This cabin is such a beautiful setting with the stream trickling through it and the bridges across periodically, making it more convenient to walk around without having to jump across the stream. There's not too much water that it's dangerous for kids, but enough for them to float things down it for fun. And the trickling water has nice background ambiance. Plus, there's a small island in the stream which the kids kitted out as a fairy garden. The grounds of the cabin have a fun variety of outdoor settings, from the kids' playground and badminton net to the back deck and the fire pit. There is even a knife and axe throwing area. Dad, I'm waiting for you to help me. Okay. The battery was at 96% when I turned on the water heater and it is now down to 88% and the water heater is still on. But you can see the mini split has achieved temperature as you can see that it's the L2 is down to 12 watts. So that means it's only pulling 12 watts from L1 as well. Uh, and right now L2 only has the mini split running on it. So the rest of that uh, is going to the water heater. I'm kind of curious about this. I'm waiting to see how much energy it takes to heat up the water heater. Uh, I, it's looking like it'll be about 10% of the battery goes into that with, I guess, the mini split running at the same time, but it really wasn't. The, the mini split hasn't been running very hard. The water heater just turned off and the battery is now down to 83%. So that is 13% of the battery that it took, but the mini split has been running and coming on and off. And also I am charging some uh, drone batteries right here. And that pulls, I think around 150 watts or thereabouts. And I'm also charging a phone over there, which is on the DC side. Not a very perfect experiment, but it'll be all right because we have plenty of energy to get us through the night. And I'm sure tomorrow our battery will be back to 100% probably. It is now almost midnight. Oh, it is actually midnight, six minutes past. And the battery is now at 70%. And you can see our loads right now are very minimal. And so we're probably not gonna have very much energy loss during the night. Right now it is 66 inside and 56 outside, so we might, we'll probably use the mini split to heat up the trailer in the morning, but we're not going to just leave it on all night. And that sound you hear over there is the noise maker that we keep on. It helps the kids not to hear noises when they're camping that wake them up. And uh, it's nice that we can run it on the AC outlet because that's uh, how it has to be on. It does not use batteries. Well, it's now in the morning, and right over there is the camera that I set up that is the time lapse I just showed you. And this is our view out the front of the trailer, and that is looking west there, so the sunrise is happening behind the trailer. And let's check on the status of the battery. I did turn on the mini split to heat up the trailer this morning. It looks like we're down to 52%. And the mini split's currently pulling almost 500 watts. And we're just barely starting to get a little bit of solar right now at 13 watts. And it is 8 to 10 a.m. The outside temperature is 53.6 degrees and the inside right now is almost 72. On this trip we have some other friends that are here in this pop-up trailer behind me and uh, we were talking last night and they don't have an inverter on their trailer so I have an extension cord that I keep in the trailer right here and we have that plugged into their trailer and to their shore power cord so now they have full AC hookups uh, to their trailer from ours and on my side what that's plugged into is this adapter right here which has a NEMA 515 plug or the four of them 
two of them are going uh, to one of my inverters and the other two are going to the other inverter and that cord is going up here into this NEMA 1450 receptacle which is tied into my electrical system and this is the one that I use on a daily basis to charge my Tesla from the trailer's electrical system. So this can support the full 20 amps on each of these legs but since they only need 120 volts we're just plugged into the one and this green dot here indicates that that's one of the hot legs and that's the secondary inverter in my case and then these red dots are the primary inverter so I can choose which one I plug into depending on which inverter is doing what and how, how I want to balance my loads so I th just thought I'd share that how, how we have our friends set up on our trailers electrical system it is now 10 a.m. and the Sun is now shining directly at our direction of course there's still plenty of shading going on the solar panels uh, but there is some direct sun on them soon. So let's go look and see what the production looks like. At 126 watts, we might as well be not getting any solar. We're not going to charge our batteries at this rate. So we'll keep waiting to see what the shade does later today. We spent the afternoon hanging out around the cabin, doing card games or other types of games indoors and outdoors. There were crafts that people were doing, playing in the stream and just exploring the area. I figured it out. Yep. <laughs> Did you lose it already, James? Did you lose your piece of ice? <laughs> right now it is 12.48 p.m. At uh, 1.28 or thereabouts is when we're going to get to the uh, solstice for the day. Uh, but in any case, right now we're getting 765 watts from the solar, which really doesn't matter on the time of the day so much as it is how much shading we're getting, you know, the position of the trees in relation to the sun at the moment. So the battery is at 48% and charging now. This is the solar exposure we're getting right now to get that 768 watts. You can see the front two panels, which are in a series with each other, are just now becoming fully in the sun. And then the rest of these are fully in the shade still. Pretty much, except for this one right here is just partially in the shade. But as the sun starts to clear this big tree right here, we're going to have a huge section of solar production in the afternoon. We are now at the meridian of the day, which is exactly in the middle. And 1.24 p.m. is the meridian today, and right now it's 1.29, so it's five minutes past. But you can see the first three solar panels are completely cleared. This fourth one just has a little bit of shading on these corners on either side. And all four of these front ones are on the same charge controller. Uh, these front two are in series with each other, and these second two are in series with, with each other, and then they are in parallel. And then this panel back here is on a charge controller all by itself. We are getting 1,000 watts, and our battery is now up to 51%. And like I said, it is 1.30 p.m. now. Lydia, did you catch a fish? Whoa! Good job! Have fun! Girls, where are you going? Have fun! Clara is going kayaking all by herself. Good job, Clara. Clara, was that so much fun? Good. Yeah, it is fun. What was your favorite part about kayaking? Just paddling? Okay, I'm gonna pull you up now. It's now 3.30 p.m. and the front several panels are starting to get shaded on this corner over here. And then this one looks to be pretty much clear. And this back one is also totally clear. Uh, so this back one is the one that's producing the most energy right now because it's on its own charge controller And then since this one is combined with that one these both are being pulled down The air conditioning has been on because it's hot and James is in there asleep The battery has gotten up to 70% and we're getting 824 watts of solar or so So we're not going to fully charge today, but that's about what I expected for the remainder of the afternoon and evening We just chilled at the cabin playing card games or various other types of games and the kids played in the brook or elsewhere on the grounds. 
On this trip, we ate all meals together as a group, which reduced how much energy we needed from our trailer, but I guess that entirely depends on what we would have been eating for dinner if we were camping on our own. When we're camping on our own, we often have food options where some of them require large amounts of energy to cook, or others that don't require much, if any, energy at all. After dinner, we had a big group picture before we continued hanging out and playing for the rest of the evening. As the sun was setting, the view through the aspens was just beautiful, and as darkness descended, the kids played games with glow sticks. It is now bedtime. The girls are going to sleep. <clears throat> Lucy, what was your favorite part about the day? Mm. Looking at squirrels and using the um, walkie-talkies. Looking at squirrels and using the walkie-talkies. Going to the fish pond. Going to the fish pond. Good night, girls. It is now 9.36 p.m. and the trailer battery is at 58% and so in the morning I'm guessing it's going to be probably down in the 30s. We didn't get over 70% today because the solar yield was so minimal due to shading from the trees. But we'll be fine anyway. We don't need to use the mini split that much if at all tonight and then in the morning we'll probably use it somewhat to heat up the trailer a little bit. Outside it, it's almost 71 degrees, and inside it's almost 64 degrees. Good morning, girls. How did you sleep? Great? Good. The night was only one second. <laughs> yeah. The trailer ended up getting, the battery ended up getting down to 39%, which is what I had anticipated. We didn't have the mini split on at all last night. One of the uh, biggest draws is that the water heater, the electric side of it, has been on this whole trip, so it periodically it comes on and draws a chunk of energy. Uh, the inverter's just being on. There's some standby loss, uh, but otherwise you can see that there's not much being consumed. And then occasionally um, the microwave has been getting used for warming up food, of course, just a little bit. Uh, and then also we have this bottle warmer here for James's bottles, and um, that pulls a couple hundred watts for a minute or two. Otherwise, our energy consumption has not actually been all that much because we're spending a lot of time in the cabin. I haven't used the mini split at all, and the interior you can see is about seven, uh, 69 degrees, and the outside is almost 57. They are making breakfast, and they are watching Formula One over there. We are now packing up to leave, and I just wanted to point out where we're at with the electrical system. This morning showers were taken, and the hot water heater used a lot of energy, so we're down to 31%. That's not too bad. We're getting a little bit of solar, but still very little for, you know, 11, 41, almost noon. Uh, and once again, this location we're in is in a lot of shade. So that's where we're at, but it's going to probably get full by the end of the day because we're going to be driving and then being at home where we have a lot more solar exposure. We are back in the truck now and we're headed home. Lucy, huh? did you have a lot of fun? Mm -hmm. What was your favorite part? My favorite part was making my potions. Making? Out of perler beads, and perler beads are this right here is a badge she made is uh, made out of perler beads. Uh, she made some potions. Do you have them with you? Oh, in your pocket. That does look like potion. Perfect. That's great. What do you girls think? What was your favorite part? Uh, playing in the shed. Playing in the shed. And I also made a potion. Oh, that is so cool. That's the love potion. Yeah. The heart. Potion. Clara, what was your favorite part? Making further beads. Making further beads, huh? All right. Here's Clara's potion. Let's see. Oh, that is so great, Clara. Good job. We have the trailer in tow behind us, and we're going to be driving about an hour and a half to get home. The drive home was just over an hour and a half, or 69 miles of driving, but we stopped at a nearby RV dump station to dump our tanks, so that added some time. Along the way, we enjoyed some beautiful views of the mountainous scenery, including Deer Creek Reservoir. The battery in the trailer was in the low 30s when we left the cabin and now it's at 63%. So that's what we gained in the last hour and a half just driving um, home. And currently we're getting two kilowatts of power and our inverters are still on. I think I'll go ahead and turn them off because we don't need them on anymore. Although when we do get home, we will be charging our Tesla off of this to bring the charge back down. So I'll probably just leave them on since we're almost home. And right now it is about 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And also the temperature in here is currently 89 degrees outside and 99 degrees outside so it's a scorcher outside also the battery temperature right now is 31 degrees celsius we're back home we've backed up the trailer and detached it from the truck and right here on the ground is my cord that goes into the garage and that i used to charge the tesla 
So I'm just gonna plug that in back right here. And also upon arriving home, the battery of the trailer is at 72%. We're getting 1850 watts and it is currently 2.35 p.m. Something else to verify is I came in here to the settings to the VRM online portal. And we can see up here the Wi-Fi icon is connected, so it has reconnected to my home Wi-Fi. And we can scroll down here and we can see that it has uh, 1.58 thousand records. Uh, and so this is the stored records for the VRM portal. So now it's uploading all of those stored records. We were gone for a while, so you can see the oldest record age right here is counting down. And so it's uploading all of the stored records from while we were off uh, disconnected from the Wi-Fi. This is the Victron monitoring portal. So this is where all of that data was uploading to that I just showed you. This is the first day of the trip. And you can see that the night before the battery was down to about 19% and it dipped down into the 18% range before it then began to charge throughout the day. And I didn't discharge the Tesla this day because we were going to be camping in it and, it, and I knew I wanted the RV battery to be full. If we jump over here to the prior day, this is what a typical day looks like. I keep it down around 20% during the height of the summer to give myself as much time as possible before the of charging from the solar before the RV battery will fill up because I'm trying to keep the RV battery from filling up so that we get maximum solar production throughout the year. And so if we go back over to the camping trip, uh, we can we used a little bit here. I think that's when I turned on the water heater to warm it up as it was using you know the energy directly from the sun. And then we got parked. It was at 100% for a little bit there before it then started to come down as we used energy in the evening and then left the inverters on and whatever you know loads were on throughout the night, which were all minimal. For that first day, our consumption was three kilowatt hours and our solar production was 10.7 kilowatt hours. If we jump to the next day, you can see how what that looked like throughout the evening. Uh, these uh, jumps in energy consumption right there, right there, right there, those are the water heater cycling on uh, periodically about every three hours to keep the hot water hot. And so sometimes if we're trying to conserve energy, we'll just turn off the hot water heater and then just turn on when we want some hot water. But in this case, we didn't do that. And the battery got down to 47% before it then went back up a bit, but still really anemic solar production because of the trees. And it got as high as 70% before it then slowly began to march down again. And for the second day, our consumption was 3.8 kilowatt hours and our solar production was 4.9 kilowatt hours. And then if we jump to the last day of the trip, we bottomed out at 31% and stayed there for a chunk of time, a couple of hours. And then the solar yield jumped up dramatically because this is when we started to drive home. And so now we were in full sun all of a sudden. So you can see right here, the dramatic difference, we're getting just a little bit of solar production and then boom, jumps up. So shade on the panels makes a gigantic difference, which should not be a surprise to anybody. And then here is when we got home and plugged in the Tesla to the trailer. And that's these big power consumption draws here for the next several hours was the Tesla not only consuming and lowering the state of charge of the battery, but also consuming all of the solar yield that was occurring at that same moment as well. And then, then we ended the day at like 19 down into 18% range. For this last day, our consumption was nine kilowatt hours and then our solar production was 8.7 kilowatt hours. When I start to get into the fall season, which this was on the cusp of you know getting into fall, I tend to let the battery maintain more like 30 to 40% state of charge. Uh, but in the height of the summer, I keep it closer to 25% usually. The car is now charging and you can see the battery is discharging at 651 watts. The solar is pr producing 1800 watts and the car is pulling 2100 watts. The car is set to charge at 10 amps and I've noticed it's a little conservative. So it's pulling a little bit less than 10 amps at 240 volts. I often will discharge it more like seven amps. Uh, but I actually kind of vary it depending on the time of day and stuff. But right now the battery has gotten charged up enough that I need to discharge the state of the battery plus consume all the solar that's being produced. So I need to charge the Tesla a little bit more quickly than if I'm just maintaining the state of charge of the battery, uh, which is what I normally do on a daily basis. And this is what it looks like on the Tesla side. This is the power cord that is charging it and that's going around over there to the uh, Juice Box Pro 40 on the wall. And then this cord here is the one that's going out through the window in the side of the garage. And then looking at the charge rate in the car, the state of charge of the car is currently at 49%. And then like down here, this is the, the 10 amps I was talking about. And I adjust the amps, not through the car now, but I do it through the Juicebox Pro 40 web interface. If you are interested in more details about the Tesla charging off of the RV, I'll put a card above to a video I made about just that. 
Thanks for coming along with us on this adventure, and it was lots of fun. Uh, this particular trip wasn't so much camping as it was expanding out the cabin to have even more families be able to stay there, and so it worked great for that. Uh, we were definitely way more in the shade and under trees than we've ever been on any prior trip, and we still may do, but we weren't really living that much in the trailer. We were still using air conditioning here and there and doing some microwave use and some other things, but generally we were hanging out in the cabin. If we needed more solar, we could have relocated the trailer, but in this case we didn't really need to, and our battery bank was high, uh, was full enough, big enough that we were able to get through it with the amount of energy that we had when we arrived and the uh, amount of generation that we had while we were there. So if this is interesting to you, if you'd like to see other adventures that will go on in the future in this trailer as well as in our Tesla, then feel free to subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.